Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Finally got the uh, digital readout installed on the K&T mill. Uh, the y-axis is was what I was waiting on and finally got that taken care of and that's what we'll cover in this video. The mounting brackets were cast using a lost foam aluminum casting method and for some reason I cannot find the video of the actual casting process. I have a few stills that we'll start the video out with but I've spent a lot of time looking for those video clips and just can't find them so We'll get on with that here in a minute. Um, the reason I needed to get the DRO set up on the mill was I um, needed to cut some gears. My first step was cutting a, just one gear tooth on that broken gear a few videos back. Um, but now I need to cut a full set of change metric transposing gears, I believe is what it's called, for one of my Hendy lathes. And so I needed to get the digital readout so I could uh, make an index plate. The uh, metric transposing gears and require 127 tooth gear and I don't have 127 tooth index plates so I need to uh, use the DRO to put the bolt pattern into some plates um, so I can make some new index plates. These are uh, for the K&T they're a two-sided plate so I'm going to make another set of plates with a 127 whole pattern so I can cut that 127 tooth gear. So that's the next project, get the index plate and then we'll start working on gears. But in order to do that I needed to get the DRO running so I could use the uh, bolt pattern feature to lay out the bolt uh, holes to mount the index plate onto the dividing head. So that project's done and we'll cover the, getting the DRO up and running uh, in this video. Thanks for stopping by and I Hope you enjoy the video. So here are the foam patterns that I cut out with a hot wire cutter and then coated them in uh, sheetrock mud and then put them in this big pot full of uh, just sandblast sand and then uh, poured, you can see the aluminum in the cans, poured aluminum in. And this is my first time trying uh, the lost foam method. It failed miserably, but it was close enough. I figured I could do a little machining and clean them up and get them to work. So here I am trying to uh, clean up the casting for the one of the mounts that will mount the uh, scale onto the side of the knee of the k and mill. I'm just using a shell mill to clean up the top and bottom of the uh, mount. And then I flipped it on its side and, and uh, cleaned up the sides. As you can see, the quality of the casting was pretty poor but it was about the right size and was a big chunk of aluminum like I needed. A little time on the belt sander cleaned it up and uh, got it to where I figured I could use it. Um, the other mount, the one that also goes on the knee to hold the other end of the scale is this one here. As you can see I had a little bit of a collapse of the, ca the when it was casting it there and but there's enough left. I think I can get away with it. There was another collapse on the outside there, which I had to I used the uh, horizontal feature of the mill to to clean that one up. Sometimes it's kind of nice to have a horizontal spindle as well as the vertical spindle, depending on you know, the shape of the piece. Sometimes it's easier to hold it and run the vertical spindle, which was the case with this mount. Just kind of showing the using the power feeds. My right hand's on the the X feed, and then I, that's the lever for the rapid traverse. And then uh, my left hand's bringing the knee up, and then use my right hand to engage the power feed again. And this is just a look at that vertical or the horizontal spindle cleaning up the the casting it would have been hard to hold this piece uh, and use the vertical spindle to machine it with it, the shape of it so it worked out well to use the horizontal spindle and here's the uh, piece after doing a little milling and here it is after a little work with the belt sander still got that caved in bit there but I thought I could make it work the way it was. So here's two more pieces I cast. We'll mount the reader head 
onto the table so that'll be mounted on the table as it moves in the y-axis and it'll hold the reader head here I'm just doing a showing a little gratuitous uh, rapid traverse of the knee it's one nice thing about the K&T it's got power feeds and rapid traverse in X Y and Z so here I'm just milling some slots it's handy to have the uh, X and the Z axes working on the digital readout to make sure the slots ended up the same size, relatively the same size. I'm just plunging an end mill in here to mill out the uh, a slot for the head of the bolt. To write, and I, I guess they didn't really need to be flush, but the castings weren't perfectly flat, so it worked out better to mill a recess in for the uh, head of the bolt. So here's the finished pieces with the um, bolts that will be going in to hold them together. Then I had to drill and countersink holes on that mounting bracket so I could mount that to the side of the knee. Just kind of had to hold on to the tippy end of the drills in order to drill them. I need to get, need to get a few longer drills for projects like that, but it worked okay. And here I'm just countersinking using the Z axis to countersink the hole for the head of the of the uh, socket cap head screw. It's probably not necessary, but the casting was kind of sloped, so I thought it might make it look more tidy. So then I needed to mount those brackets onto the side of the knee so it meant drilling and tapping um, some holes into the side of the knee um, this is the first hole i tapped and uh, as you can see right here when i went to thread the bolt in it snapped off in the hole it didn't get hard it just kind of snapped off must have had a couple bolts that were kind of weird i'm not sure where they came from but they didn't work very well so i ground off the well, the remain of the bolt with the Dremel and moved over about a quarter of an inch and started over again and just using a transfer punch to uh, punch a hole location and then drilled and tapped once again and I apologize for not having the sound on this but with the uh, when I went to edit this, I realized it had the radio on most of the time, and I've heard that kids causes problems with the YouTube videos. I think Keith Fenner had to delete a bunch of video of his old videos because he had the radio going. But so I'm just putting another hole in. You, I had to move that little bracket that's up above my hands. That's the uh, that's a movable stop for the Y travel. You can set those stops, and it'll kick the kick the travel off when it when it reaches those. So here's the big piece of plate. It's about three inches wide by half inch thick that I'm going to use to mount the scale to. And then there's the bracket that mounts to the table for the reader head to run on. Just kind of marking out this uh, the piece of aluminum bar so I can know where to, to make the slots for the mounting holes for it. So there it is kind of marked out and just kind of eyeballing in some slots for the mounting bolts here's just a quick tip i saw this i saw this years ago on one of the forums just some uh that's just some metal banding that comes on like a pallet i just bend them up like that to hold the parallels in super handy way to keep your parallels from falling over and uh, you can usually get that banding for free so since i don't have the y-axis set up i needed to uh have some way to measure the length of those slots so I put the dial indicator uh, on the knee and then up against the table so I could uh, get the slots about the same length and so here's the slots for the mounting bolts just using some socket cap head screws needed to keep those flush down below the surface because the uh, scale will actually be going over those so just marked the locations of the slots and tapped a couple holes in the 
bracket and mounted the plate up. And uh, just to test things out, I went ahead and put the uh, bracket for the reader head back on to make sure everything was going to end up where it needed to be. And then kind of held the scale up to make sure the reader, there was enough length on that bracket to catch the reader head. So then I had to decide how thick to make the other mounting bracket. I had to take a little bit off. I just measured the thickness of the bracket, the thickness of the plate that holds the scale, and then uh, the distance behind it, and was able to get it to slide right in there like it uh, like it belonged. Almost like I knew what I was doing there. But the reason that bracket is shaped like that is behind there, and I'll show that in a little bit. There's a uh, a stop for the uh, power feed in the, on the knee that you can set stops to kick the power feed out at whatever you need it. You can see it there, that bracket, that cast piece, that arm behind is what kicks the uh, power feed in and out. So that bracket had to clear that so it can move through its travel. So there's the two brackets mounted on the knee. And ready for the scale to go on. So I had to mark the uh, mark the slots on the left bracket and drill and tap that. Again, those slots had to countersunk for the socket cap head screws so that they would uh, the scale would be able to sit on their flush. Now I got to decided to check and see how good a job I did of lining things up by uh, putting a dial indicator onto the saddle and then uh, cranking it back and forth. As you can see, it uh, actually worked out pretty good, well within the spec for the uh, for the scales. From that, the DRO has some specs on how close everything needs to be, and as that uh, doesn't move much, it's plenty close enough. Now I've got the scale or the dial indicator sitting on top of the plate to see how how horizontal I've got it or parallel to the travel of the in the y-axis it was close enough there's a little bit of uh, room in this mounting screws on the scale that I'd be able to to get that dialed in so I went ahead and drilled and tapped for the uh, scale and so I could go ahead and uh, get that scale mounted up in order to set the uh, distance, the reader head needs to be away from the, you know, position it, it relative to the scale. I just have a two gauge blocks there. According to the instructions, it's supposed to be 310 thousandths from the back of the scale. So I just have two gauge blocks to make that up and then kind of held them in place while I tightened the bracket that the reader head slides on down. Um, and that seemed, that seemed to work pretty well. I was also measuring to make sure I had the height right. There's some slotted holes at the bottom of that bracket that holds the reader head that where those screws I'm tightening up are that allowed for a little bit of up and down movement to make sure I got everything positioned properly. So I'm just giving it a try out and make sure everything moves and nothing hits. That was one of my concerns. There's It's not really designed for this, so there's... You know, had to make sure nothing would run into something else. So now it was time to test out the digital readout and see how accurate it was. So I've got a dial indicator on the saddle and I'm just uh, moving the saddle back and forth and comparing what I'm getting on the dial indicator with uh, what the digital readout is showing. So I take it down to zero on the dial indicator and then uh, I'll swing you up to the uh, digital readout so we can see what the digital readout says and right at 900 thousandths and then I'll go ahead and take it back to zero and 
see if the dial indicator and the digital readout agree. Getting that last half a thousand can be a little bit tricky. And back down to the dial indicator, maybe, if I can find it. There it is, and it's back on zero. So I was pretty happy with the, uh, seems like those, that digital readout's dead on. Yeah, close enough for anything I do, that's for sure. So I thought I'd try a little, just a smaller movement, go a half inch and 500,000, see if that would uh, work also. And seems to still be right on. So pretty happy with the accuracy of that. So I'm just giving you a walk around. I, I zip tied a uh, surge strip onto the arm that holds the digital readout so I could plug in some lights and the other stuff I use when I'm using the, the mill and just turn it all off with the power uh, surge strip there. So there's the uh, digital readout screen, nice little Accurite and the arm that's uh, bolted in. This is a breather cover on the side of the mill. I just made some studs that that plate bolts to. The breather plate's still under there and I stood them off about a half inch so the uh, it could still breathe but gave a nice solid place to mount that post to that, and I, that holds the arm for the uh, digital readout. So here's the X reader head just bolted down to the saddle. Had to ma machine out a little bit of a clearance because there's a, a little bit of a step out there. But uh, that was pretty straightforward. Just bolted the scale directly to the table and made that little aluminum bracket to hold the reader head. Here's the Z axis, which is mounted on the quill, which I, I find very handy. Really like it. Seems to work well. Um, got some little nylon guides I made to kind of guide the cable as it goes up and down to keep it from uh, rubbing or abrading on anything. And that reader head is just uh, mounted right to the uh, that little post that goes up and down that, uh, for the quill stop you can, where you can set the quill stop. You can see that little post. I made a video about making that whole bracket to hold that on there, but it seems to work well. Uh, I really like having the the digital readout on the quill. So that's the Z axis and here's the Y axis after everything's all done. As you can tell, as you might notice, I switched the cable out to the other side of the reader head. And uh, so it goes out the back through a couple of nylon guides to kind of help it keep it from kinking or catching on anything or abrading. But that's the, uh, and that's the Y axis. So we got that digital readout on and running and really enjoy having it. I think it's going to be a great addition and it'll help me do my next, uh, get that index plate mate so I can just start my next project. Here are some steel photos of the mount. Um, I wanted to apologize for the lack of sound in this video once again. I, prefer to have the sound in, but I've got to remember to turn the radio off better when I'm working. Sometimes when you get working, it's uh, nice to have the radio on. But there's the uh, Accurite Microline uh, DRO mounted on a 1945 Kearney and Trekker 2HL Universal Mill. Um, it seems to work great. It's the same, uh, I think Keith Fenner's got the same mill. He's got some videos on his restoration of his. I'll put a link in the description and if you're interested. Great mills. Um, can't can't complain anything about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. 
the video and I'm glad you stopped by and thanks for watching.